Hello and welcome to the Mexico channel. My name is Angela and in this video we are going to continue tackling the jam pass question for English language for the year 2024. Please stay with us, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel. Like I said earlier, we're going to be tackling the jam pass question for English language for the year 2024. So in today's video, we're going to be focusing on questions 201 to 219. Let's begin with 201. Choose the option that is opposite in meaning to the word or phrase underlined. The commissioner thought that the proposal would fall through. Option A, succeed. B, be discarded. C, be written off. And D, fail. The answer to this question is option A, succeed. When a plan falls through, that means it failed or it did not materialize. So the opposite of that would be that the plan succeeded. So the opposite of fall through in this context is succeed. So option A is the answer to this question. Question 202. Choose the option nearest in meaning to the word or phrase underlined. His persistently poor performance is already driving his parents round the bend. Option A, making his parents sad. B, making his parents mad. C. Driving his parents into a corner and D. Causing his parents some problems. The answer to this question is option D. Causing his parents some problems. So to drive someone around the bend means to cause a lot of problems for someone. Um, to make them feel dissatisfied with the situation that is going on. So the nearest meaning to that would be option D. Causing his parents some problems. Option D is the answer to this question. Question 203. Again, we have to choose the option nearest the meaning to the underlined word or phrase. We had to prevail upon him to accept that offer. Option A, cajole. B, overrule. C, persuade. And D, force. So the answer to this question is option C, persuade. To prevail upon someone means to persuade or convince someone to accept your point of view or to do something you want them to do. So you had to prevail upon him to accept that offer. That means you had to persuade him to accept that offer. It may feel like option A, Kajo, is the answer to this question, but please note that Kajo, although it means to persuade someone, it also means to persuade someone using flattery. So there is more to the meaning of Kajo than persuade. Persuade is the nearest in meaning to prevail upon him. Option C is the answer to this question. Question 204. Again, we have to choose the option nearest in meaning to the underlined word. Mr. Jebu displayed a high sense of conviviality during the gala. Option A, spitefulness. B, conjugality. C, friendliness. And D, blissfulness. So the answer to this question is option C, friendliness. So when you are talking about conviviality, we are talking about friendliness and sociableness. So that means Mr. Jebu was very friendly to the people he met at the gala. He was very sociable. He associated with them very well. So the nearest meaning to conviviality is option C, friendliness. Question 205. Again, we have to choose the option nearest the meaning to the underlined word. Despite the cancellation of the excursion, the students still waited at the school gates. Option A, delay. B, abandonment. C, lifting. And D, abortion. So the answer to this question is option D, abortion. So when you are cancelling something, you are actually aborting something. Abortion and cancellation, they mean exactly the same thing. It may feel like the answer is aban abandonment. But abandonment means to leave something behind. In this context, abortion is nearest the meaning to cancellation. To abort something means to cancel it, to end it forever. So the excursion was no longer happening. So that's the reason why abortion is closest in meaning to cancellation. Option D is the answer to this question. Question 206. Accountants are discreet with their records. Option A, rash. B, strategic. C, wise. And D, cautious. The answer to this question is option D, cautious. To be discreet means to maintain a level of privacy and confidentiality. To use careful judgments when you are handling a particular um, document or a set of instructions given to you. So accountants are discreet. They try to be private, to use careful judgments with their records. So the nearest meaning to that to be cautious. Cautious means also to use careful judgments when you are handling something. So option D, cautious, is the answer to this question. Do you know you can take practice questions with our simulated jam CBT pass question? All you need to do is to go down to the link in the description below. This takes you to the My School website where you can download the My School mobile app for your Android devices and the My School software for your laptops and computers. Please go ahead and start practicing. Now to question 207. Choose the option that best completes the gap. 
First dog should be kept in the dash during the day. Option A, garage, B, cage, C, kennel, D, balcony. The answer to this question is option C, kennel. Kennel is the usual habitat for a dog, for a domestic dog. So it is in a kennel that you keep a dog. Although it may feel like cage is the answer because we often use that to refer to the place where we keep a dog. But kennel is the um, official term used in this particular context when you're talking about how fierce dogs are meant to be kept. So option C, kennel, is the answer to this question. I believe you're enjoying this content. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 208. Again, we have to choose the option that best completes the gap. We have known Rose for some years now. She is a friend of Dash. A R's, B R's, C R's, and D R. So the answer to this question is option A R's. R's is the proper possessive pronoun to use, but you do not make use of an apostrophe when you are making use of the possessive pronoun. Possessive pronouns do not come with an apostrophe, so you have to choose the R's without a possessive pronoun. Option A R's is the answer to this question. Question 209. Again, we have to select the option that best completes the gap. The new National Security Committee dash retired military personnel, A comprised, B comprises of, C is comprising, and D comprises. So the answer to this question is option D comprises. So when you're making use of this verb comprises, you do not add the preposition of. Okay, you make use of the verb alone. When you're making use of consist or made up, you have to add the of. So, as in, you have the same thing, the new National Security Committee consists of, or the new National Security Committee is made up of. But when you are use, making use of comprises, you do not have to add the preposition of to the verb. So, comprises is the best option to fill in that gap. So, you have the new National Security Committee comprises retired military personnel. Option D is the answer to this question. Question 210. His car dash off well. So he arrived late for the meeting. Option A, ran out. B, ran out of. C, ran out of. And D, ran on out. So the answer to this question is option A, ran out. So ran out is the proper phrasal verb to add to the sentence in order to complete it. So his car ran out of well. So he arrived late for the meeting. So ran out means that something was um, completely depleted. So his car was completely depleted of well. So he arrived late for the meeting. So when you make use of ran out of, you are going to be repeating the off, so that is why that is not the answer to this question. And you can use run out on. To run out on something, that means to run away because you are actually leaving that particular situation. Run on out is not a, a proper phrasal verb to use in this context. The phrasal verb to use in this context is option A, run out. So option A is the answer to this question. Question 211. Dash the word in a thesaurus. Option A, look for. B, look in. C, look at. And D, look up. The answer to this question is option D, look up. So the proper phrasal verb to use when you are looking for information in a particular reference source is the phrasal verb look up. You look up something in a dictionary or a thesaurus. So option D, look up, is the answer to this question. Question 212. Ade was told to finish the assignment dash time. Option A on, B with, C at, and D by. The answer to this question is option A on. So when you finish something on time, you finish it at the required, expected, or specific time. So Ade was told to finish the assignment on time. Option A on is the answer to this question. Question 213. Dash is expanding rapidly. Option A, a city of Abuja, B, the city of Abuja, C, city of Abuja, and D, Abuja of a city. So the answer to this question is option B, the city of Abuja. So you're making use of B to specify that you're referring to a particular noun, that is a proper noun as opposed to a common noun. When you are referring to a common noun, you can make use of A because there are so many um, common nouns. In this particular context, you are trying to be specific about the noun you are referring to. We are talking about the city of Abuja. So the city of Abuja is the best option to fill in that gap. So the complete sentence would be, the city of Abuja is expanding rapidly. Option B is the answer to this question. Question 214. Choose the option that has the same vowel sound as the one represented by the letters underlined. The word is boy. Option A, boy. B, trough. C, roots. And D, good. So let's go to the board to transcribe the words. So the word boy. It's pronounced as boy. Sometimes you pronounce it as boy, but the British um, pronunciation is boy. 
so it is transcribed as b or oh, yeah. so this is the specific vowel letters that we are meant to focus on so option a is pronounced boy as well so we have boy you can see that option a and the word boy they are homonymous that means they have exactly the same pronunciation then option b is pronounced trough although it looks like um true or trow it's pronounced trough so when you transcribe it you have t r o and f trough then option c is pronounced root although sometimes you pronounce it as route route is the american pronunciation the british pronunciation is root so you transcribe it as root then we have good it's pronounced good so we have g we have the short o sound and d good so from this transcription we can see that um, boy has that um, vowel sound that we have in boy as well so let's go to the um, screen to mark our answer so from the transcription of those words option a boy is the answer to this question question 215 Again, we have to choose the option that has the same vowel sound as the one represented by the letter underlined. The word is money. Option A, Monday, B, go, C, mouth, and D, rock. So let's go to the board to transcribe the words. All right, for the word money, we are focusing on the letter O in that word, and it's transcribed as money. Money. Okay, we don't pronounce it as money. It's pronounced money. Then the word Monday is transcribed as m a day. So we have Monday, not Monday, Monday. Then we have go, go. So we have g and the diphthong o, go. Then we have mouth, mouth. We have m, ow, that's the diphthong ow. And then we have f, mouth. Then we have rock, rock, r, o, k. So from this transcription, we can see that um, the a uh in money can be found in Monday as well. So let's go to the screen to mark our answer. So from the transcription of the words, we can see that option A has a similar vowel sound as money. So option A is the answer to this question. Do you have a question? Please feel free to ask your question by going down to the link in the description below. This takes you to my school website where you can ask your question and the solution will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now on to question 216. Choose the option that has the same consonant sound as the one represented by the letter underlined. The word is bet. Option A, pap. B, det. C, tome. And D, lab. Now let's go to the board to transcribe the words. So the word bet is transcribed as b -e -t. bet. Then the word pap is transcribed as p. Then we have the r sound and p, pap. Then the word debt, the b is silent. We don't pronounce it as debt. It's pronounced debt. So we have d, e, and t, debt. Then we have the word tum, tum. So we have t, the u sound it's long and then we have m it's pronounced tum then we have lab lab again we have the l a and b lab so from this um, transcription we can see that lab has that b sound that we can find in bets since we are looking for this particular the sound in that particular vowel letter so now let's go to the screen to mark our answer so from the transcription of the words, you can see that um, option D, lab, has the same sound in bets. This makes option D the answer to this question. Do you have a better explanation or solution to any of these questions? If you do, go down to the comment section below, indicate the question number and the solution we'd like to share. Question 217. Again, we have to choose the option that has the same consonant sound as the one represented by the letter. So the word is river. Option A, fear. B, car. C, risk. And D, litter. Now let's go to the board to transcribe the words. So for the word river, it's transcribed as v, e, v, and the short sound uh, is pronounced river. Then we have fear, fear. So we have 
and then the diphthong ear, ear. So we have fear. Then we have car. It's transcribed as ka and long r. So you can see something similar among these three sounds. The fact that they end with an r letter, but we do not add that to the transcription to the pronunciation. That is because we do not pronounce the r at the end of a word, especially for British English. So when you pronounce these words, you do not pronounce the r at the end. Americans do pronounce the r, but British English, the r is not pronounced. So we have river, fear, and car. We do not pronounce the r at the end. Then for the word risk, the r is at the beginning of the word, and it's important in the pronunciation. So you have to add it. So you have risk. Risk. Then we have liter. So it's transcribed as li. E, it's the long E sound. Then we have T, and then we have the schwa sound. So it's pronounced liter. So from the transcription of these words, we can see that river and risk both have that R sound at the beginning of the word. So we can see that here and here. But we can't find them in other words because the R at the end is not pronounced. So let's go back to the screen to mark our answer. So from the transcription of the words, we can see that option C, risk, is the answer to this question. Question 218. Choose the most appropriate stress pattern from the options. The stress syllables are written in capital letter. So the word is informative. So we have to look for the option that has that stress pattern for the word. The first thing we have to do for the word informative is to divide it into syllables. So we have in, for, me, tiv, informative. So um, it's important to note the rule for polysyllabic words that um, appeals to this particular question. The rule that when a particular word e ends with I-V-E, the stress is on the antepenultimate syllable, that is the third syllable from the last. But again, it's important to note that this rule doesn't always work, but it does work sometimes. So you can use that along with your judgments when answering this question. So the stress is on the antepenultimate syllable. But when you also pronounce it as well, informative, you can see that the stress is on four, informative, informative. So from um, the rule and the pronunciation, you can see that the stress is on four. So this makes option A, informative, the answer to this question. Question 219. The word in capital letters has the emphatic stress. Choose the option to which the given sentence relates. The product was rejected as fake. Option A, was the product accepted? B, was the product rejected though genuine? C, was the product faked? And D, was the produce rejected as fake? So the answer to this question is option D, was the produce rejected as fake? So in, remember that the definition for emphatic stress is that it is the placement of greater stress on a particular word or syllable in an utterance. So this is usually done for emphasis or for clarification. In this particular case, it is done for clarification because the person who asked the question made an error. In the question and the person who is responding is trying to clarify that error that has been made so was the produce rejected as fake produce was the mistake that was made and this is the reason why the person who is responding is stressing products so that the person who asked the question can know that there was a mistake in that part of his question so was the produce rejected as fake no the products was rejected as fake the stress is on products so this makes option D, was the produce rejected as fake? The answer to this question. I believe you're enjoying this content. If yes, please don't forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.